Bill's here with our first look at weather, and Bill, I hear there's some darkling shadows on the weather map tonight. Yeah, you know, it just occurred to me that most of the things that happen on the weather map that make the weather uh, in are the summertime <laughs> are, are up, in, it's up in the sky. Right. You know, I'm always talking about upper troughs and upper ridges and all this kind of stuff, but that is what's making the weather right now. We had a splendid example of that today. Okay. Like during the day today, you probably noticed we didn't have any great big thunderheads or anything like that. That's because we were under an upper ridge, an area of warm air aloft. Now that area of warm air aloft has gone away and taking its part is that dreaded of all meteorological phenomenon, the upper trough. Now the upper trough is cold air and when the cold air comes in it doesn't matter whether it's nighttime or daytime or what it is it's going to give you a bad time and I'm afraid we have one of those on top of us right now. The dreaded upper trough. More details later. You're watching Edmonton's number one choice for news. ITV News at 10. A shock at the Bernardo trial today. The accused sex killer's lawyer dropped hints that his client may take the stand. The defense also hinted the trial could last well into September. Sue Scambati has more on the day's events. Whoa! Whoa! Paul Bernardo's lawyer says this Christmas videotape shows no sign of stress or worry in Carla Homolka just hours before her little sister was raped. And John Rosen suggested Homolka had plenty of opportunity to prevent the assault. I could have done a lot of things, Mr. Rosen, she said. In his most aggressive attack yet, Rosen angrily shouted questions at Homolka. The most damning accusation concerned her comment about oral sex with her sister. Rosen suggested the reason Homolka said it was disgusting was not out of moral revulsion, but because Tammy was menstruating. Homolka retorted, that's a lie. Rosen played a videotape of the assault and pointed to a white object on the screen. Surprise, surprise, he said. She's wearing a sanitary napkin. Hamolka, I never saw one. Rosen, what, are you blind? Hamolka, no, I was not blind. I wasn't looking. Rosen maintained if the kinky sex with Tammy was soured because she was having her period, that puts a different spin on Hamolka's testimony. You see, Miss Hamolka, your whole story is founded on your assertion that you were forced to commit sexual acts on your sister. If that's not the case, everything that follows has to be looked at in a different light. Rosen asked if Hamolka was torn by guilt and shame. I felt like I was dead inside, she said. Rosen quipped, oh, we've heard that one before. The defense lawyer pounded Homolka about her immediate reaction to Tammy's death, suggesting she merely dropped a few tears. What you never did, Miss Homolka, was pick up something and throw it at Paul Bernardo. Yell some sort of recrimination, like, you son of a bitch, look what you did to my sister. Homolka replied, people have different reactions to different situations. Throughout the questioning, Homolka's face went red. She sniffled and cried. It was the most emotion she's shown during her entire testimony. After Tammy's death, Rosen pointed out that Homolka again had many chances to tell the police or her parents about what happened, but didn't. The court heard that within days of the tragedy, Bernardo brought home another girl for kinky sex, but Homolka chickened out at the last minute. You don't stand there and say, get her the hell out, Rosen asked. I didn't say no to Paul, she replied, because he had this terrible secret over my head. Rosen shot back, you had just as much over his head. In national news, more fallout today after a Senate committee report accused Transport Canada of putting airline travelers at risk. Yesterday, the committee charged that Transport Canada is needlessly pushing automated weather systems. It said pilots flying into Edmonton's Muni have been using a giant Molson's beer sign to guide them rather than relying on the airport's weather system. Today, critics question why the weather systems are used at all. Clearly, there's something behind it that, uh, that is not visible to the public, whether it's a contract or, or something of the sort that is giving the, the impetus behind them saying we must carry on and carry on with the installation of, of the equipment. They better stop that until they know that it's working. The automated system was developed with Environment Canada for smaller airports and lighthouses. 
A strike at the Montreal casino is costing the Quebec government half a million dollars a day. 1,900 casino workers were locked out after contract negotiations broke down. The employees want a four-day week and more French-speaking management. In World News tonight, more than 100 Grateful Dead fans were injured, three critically, when a wooden deck at a campground collapsed. The Deadheads had gathered at the campground in preparation for a concert tonight. The entire left side of the building had collapsed. What it turned out to be was there was a deck, a covered porch, which was full of people, people underneath. It actually broke away from the building itself, trapping the subjects underneath. Last night's accident follows an incident Sunday when thousands of Grateful Dead fans stormed a concert site in Indianapolis. A California woman was shot and killed by police after she led officers on a high-speed chase. The woman stopped her truck, then raised a gun as officers surrounded her. When she put the gun down, police officers shot her. In Belfast, 11 police officers were injured after rioters threw stones. The police officers were trying to prevent a protest march. It's a third day of violence following the release of a soldier convicted in the murder of a Catholic woman. And the space shuttle Atlantis will return home tomorrow. Today, final medical checks were done on three men who've been in space for four months. They'll return home in special seats to help them readjust to gravity. After six months of sometimes gripping, sometimes boring testimony, the prosecution at the O.J. Simpson trial wrapped up its case today. And as Ann McDermott reports, the defense can't wait to begin. The prosecution has completed its case against Orenthal James Simpson. All right, is there anything further from the people? At this time, subject to the receipt of the people's exhibits into evidence, the people rest. Prosecution's case ended on the testimony of an FBI hair and fiber expert. Cole Brown Simpson's mother, Judita, was expected to be the last witness. But instead, both sides stipulated she had called her daughter about 35 minutes before the prosecution says the killings occurred. This was the last time that Judita Brown spoke to her daughter, Nicole Brown Simpson. The prosecution's case lasted five and a half months with 58 witnesses taking the stand. I think there was a sense of relief. One juror I saw, a woman in the front row, smiled a little bit. A few minutes later, the judge made a joke to the jury, and a lot of them were smiling. And when he asked if they wanted to trade places with him, one woman raised her hand, and she was nodding vigorously. So there was some sense of relief, I, I thought. The question now is whether the prosecution convinced the jury of Simpson's guilt. A CNN USA Today Gallup poll shows 45% of the respondents thought the prosecution proved Simpson's guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. 37% said it did not. The poll also found that 67% of those asked believe the case will wind up with a hung jury. 10% said they think Simpson will be found guilty. 14% said not guilty. Starting Monday, the jury will begin hearing Simpson's side of the story. Judge Lance Ito asked Simpson if he agreed to allow his attorneys to put on a defense. You've discussed with your client his right uh, at this point not to present a defense. He understands he has the right to rest upon the evidence as it's been presented by uh, the prosecution. He does understand that, Your Honor. Is that correct, Mr. Simpson? Well, I look forward to putting on our witnesses, getting them on, getting them off, and getting this case to the jury. The defense expects to spend four to six weeks presenting its case. And the first witness could be O.J. Simpson's mother, Eunice. Defense attorney Carl Douglas was in Chicago Thursday, arranging to bring six witnesses to Los Angeles. It's expected those people will say Simpson didn't appear unusual on his flight from Los Angeles to Chicago the night of the killings. Well, this unsettled weather continue into the weekend. Here's what it looks like out there right now. But we'll have the forecast when we come back. And in sports, could Edmonton reap the rewards of the NHL draft? And on health matters, are you willing to donate an organ for cash? Coming up on tomorrow's First News, we'll preview the big NHL draft in our city on Saturday. And have you ever heard of wakeboarding? It's a hot new sport. We'll tell you all about it. We'll do our best to stay out of the sand traps. It's the Kidney Foundation's golf tournament tomorrow out at the Derrick Golf Course. We'll take you there. Because you don't pay for expensive furniture showrooms at United Furniture Warehouse, our prices are a dramatic drop from the competitions. United Furniture Warehouse.
It takes a Canadian to know how hard Canadians work. That's why Zellers works hard to give you more for your money. Save 33% on all name brand coolers. Save up to 40% on youths and adults ATVs and on men's Gordie Howe and Fox coordinates during our clearance sale. More rewards, more savings, more money back. Zellers with the lowest price is the law every day. Sunday. Uh, I was waiting for that space. Face it, lady, we're younger and faster. If I'd answered the door wearing only cellophane, would you still be watching the baseball game? No, honey, I'd probably be checking you into a loony bin. You didn't kill Ed now, did you? Not yet. What are you doing? Face it, girls. I'm older and I have more insurance. Jessica Tandy and Kathy Bates star in Fried Green Tomatoes, Sunday at 9 on ITV. One call. Yes, one call can help you find romance. Land you ringside. Put you front row center. Get you into exclusive sporting events. And draw you into adventure. Because home theater brings you an exciting world of entertainment value. Premier edition movies. Live events like boxing, wrestling, big ticket concerts, and exclusive pay-per-view sports. Home theater pay-per-view. Big name entertainment in the comfort of your home. Call your local cable company for details. Because you don't pay for expensive furniture showrooms at United Furniture Warehouse, we can sell you fine furniture and mattresses at much lower prices. United Furniture Warehouse. Edmonton will soon be the center for Western Canada's military operations, which is good news for the local economy. Seven new buildings will be built here to handle additional troops. Two other buildings will be renovated. The construction means an extra $100 million for our city's economy. The base already brings $160 million to the Edmonton area every year. That number is expected to increase as well. Moving a brigade of that size into a base like Edmonton will create a construction demand not unlike that experienced in the early 50s when the mail was first constructed. Construction on the base will start in August and should be completed by next fall. Two Edmonton area contractors have already been chosen for the project. Edmonton is feeling and acting more and more like a city of champions this week. The NHL draft this weekend has created a storm of activity and the local service industry is booming. Wendy Tabers reports. The stage is set. Come Saturday, the Coliseum will be jammed, filled with the young and the restless, as the lives of hundreds of NHL draft hopefuls are changed forever. They started pouring into town yesterday, young men from all over the world, each one registering for a shot at the bigs. But the draft is much more than a chance of a lifetime for a group of hockey players. It's a chance for Edmonton to get back in the game. Everything's just smoking. It's, it seems like your day's only 10 minutes long, and it, it's over before you know it. So things are really moving along. Local sports retailers are doing brisk business during this notoriously slow summer season. The downtown core seems to have sprung to life. There is so much action down here. Hotels are bursting at the seams, trying to accommodate 2,000 out-of-towners here for the draft, plus all their friends and family. The city stands to gain about $5 million in economic spin-offs from the influx of all these people. Controversy in the last couple of years that, you know, with the player strike and their, or the players lockout and the building controversy, this is really positive for Edmonton. Positive for Edmonton and for a lot of little boys who dream of hearing their names called out on draft day. I love hockey and I, le and I love to be a professional hockey player and play with uh, and be famous. Tony's only nine years old, but he has his sights set on being a professional hockey player. He is so keen, the grade four student spending part of his valuable summer holidays honing his skills in a power skating class. Tony already knows what he'll say to the media when he's a big star. I just want to get out there, score goals, have fun. Fun and games, and enough worldwide coverage to give the city of Edmonton a chance to score some major league publicity points. Wendy Tiberge, ITV News at 10. And you can be part of the excitement in front of City Hall on Friday. 18 of the hottest draft prospects will be there. And don't forget your camera. The Stanley Cup will be on display. That's tomorrow at noon in front.